So what distributors do is essentially bring uh, the audience to the film, you know, with a, with a bridge that's going to make those, uh, bring those two elements together. There's two very, very different audiences. Um, one is a more review-driven, um, they're aware of things like actors and directors, and the other audience is much more uh, genre-driven. Um, and what's interesting is when you have a film that crosses... Uh, both ways, or attempts to do both things. As a filmmaker, the best way to get uh, a distributor interested in your work is firstly do your homework, you know, do some research around what distributors are out there. You can, you can find them easily online and think about what, the, what films are like the film you're making um, and find out who distributed those films. And there's pretty likely both you're not going to waste their time and vice versa. If you're trying to find a distributor, making these comparables yourself, and then thinking, and then it's so easy on the internet to find out who distributed those films and building your own profile about who's out there and who might be interested in your films. So uh, how do distributors find uh, the projects they're interested in? Um, well, essentially, we're looking, for, we're looking for the same elements that when you're putting a film together finance-wise or if budgets, even if it's a low budget, you know, it's still the same elements an audience is going to be interested in, be it the, the cast or, or the genre or um, uh, who's in front of the camera, who's behind the camera. There are different elements of a film that are going to make it a strong proposition. A script for me on its own, never quite sure. You know, you have a script, but it's, it's, the, the proof is definitely the pudding. It's very difficult. If we're going to get involved in a film, especially if you're looking for an upfront advance, uh, to get involved in a script is very, very risky. Um, you know, if you come with, and you reduce those risks for us by saying, yeah, but I can't this person. I'm not lying, um, you know, or things like, you know, as I mentioned, genre, etc. Then, you know, we're going to be interested. So, if you're making a low-budget film, I mean, essentially, your budget shouldn't um, uh, shouldn't detract from whether it's a good a good story. You know, a good story can be made on a low budget. It's not necessarily the budget that's the key thing, but. Um, uh, you know, obviously, if you've got a low budget, then the film is only going to stretch so far. And so there's a certain level of distributor that just won't be interested in your film because it's just too uh, small in scope or, or, or stature, as it were. But don't be put off by being low budget. It shouldn't be the reason why uh, your film does not get distribution. I mean, it's quite possible that in terms of acquiring a low budget film, especially if it's a first time filmmaker or, or you know, a young production company, you know, you wouldn't put any money into the acquiring of the film. Uh, generally, I would make a pitch to you about the services that I was going to offer and what I'm going to do for your film and how I'm going to take it to the market. And, you know, rather than me paying you up front, um, maybe I'll offer you a, a spread the risk of it and I'll offer you a bigger share of the, of the back end. The licensing agreements uh, in the UK are generally have a number of key criteria that basic kind of criteria you're looking for, like any deal. It's the scope of a deal. Um, so quite common will be a license period between, say, 7 and 15 years, generally. Sometimes studios would push to more like 25 years. Um, they'll, they'll set out what the territory is. For us, it's the UK and Ireland. Uh, they'll set out the basic rights that that includes, uh, theatrical, DVD, television, um, and what the uh, break of receipts, uh, what, what the split of profits is for those different rights. And like all contracts, they just cover what happens when things goes, goes wrong. If you as a filmmaker, what you do when the distributor goes bust, or what happens with your film rights if your company goes in, goes, disappears. Once I've got more money than I've spent on releasing your film, then there's going to be something left. So there's going to be a cake left. Now generally, if we've advanced you um, some profits, we would have made an agreement about what the split of that cake is going to be. Um, so generally, kind of industry general standards, for example, are theatrical income will be split 50-50. DVD is very different, don't ask me why. Uh, it's generally around 80-20 in our favour, but then the costs of making a DVD, taking that DVD to market, are generally born out of our share. Why that's really theatrical, I don't know, this is industry standards. Television tends to be the complete other way around. Generally, it's about 70 30 in your favour. Well, video on demand uh, is an exciting uh, development in the distribution business. I say development, but it feels like one's been talking about it for 10 years. But um, there's real growth in the last year across a number of kind of key platforms. 
uh, iTunes as a new entrant into the market and is showing that there is some life on online video on demand, but primarily the video on demand um, has uh, brought money back for, for films uh, where it's television based um, on Sky Box Office and on Filmflex on Virgin uh, Cable. People will want to watch films on TV, it's practically like Paris cinemas. We just have to provide that distribution channel. Once that's there, then yeah, we can, we can look at different models and that will change again what we spend on marketing and again what we bring back to producers. So it's very important to understand the difference between sales agents and distributors um, when you're a producer looking for representation for your film. Uh, understanding that distributors work generally in uh, specific territories, such as the UK and Ireland, or France, or Benelux, which is Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, um, as opposed to a sales agent who will represent your film internationally, globally, starting at festivals and then trying to sell on to specific markets. Um, often it's very important for a sales agent though to have a what they could see as distribution within its home territory. So for a British film they think it's important that you have a distribution deal within the UK um, and that will certainly help your chances of getting a sales agent to represent your film. Again, sales agents will take a good commission for their work but essentially, you know, they will open doors to both film festivals and other distributors, and these are doors that you just cannot discover by yourself, I would argue. How do we get involved? How do distributors like us get involved? And I would say anyone under a studio level, so all the optimums and icons and momentums, artificial eye, ourselves, you know, we do all get involved in British films. Um, and, you know, we all pretty much work in the same system of kind of apart from going out there to film festivals and looking at short films or um, uh, working with production companies we work with once and then we just keep in touch with them if we get on, get on with them and vice versa. Um, so you hear about projects coming through, uh, regional screen agencies like the guys at Northern Film Media, you know, if they think there's an interesting project that they think we should look at, they'll let us know. Um, same in the other, the other, the other regions. Um, so there are kind of like, there are definitely kind of communication channels, but for sure, at least six out of ten projects come from people just getting in touch with us. And there'll always be, all the, all the distributors I mentioned will have somebody working in acquisitions. Um, and often they'll have two or three people. And essentially, you know, you, it's, it's appealing to them in the same way that you're trying to appeal to your finances where you've got the film made and you're not quite completed, whatever. It's, it's still the same elements and, um, you know, different distributors will respond to different things.